space. Not all game objects will have some type of visual representation, but they have the potential to have a position. So we saw that we can access the game object this scripting component is a part of by using game object with a capital O right here. By accessing game object dot transform dot position dot X, we can get the X position of the corresponding com transform component of the game object we are attached to. We also saw we wanted to change it by a very small decimal amount. Decimal amounts within the C-sharp programming language are called floats. It gets that name because the decimal point can float around. So in this case, because we're working with a decimal number, we need to put a little tiny F at the end, and this signals it is a decimal number. So we have a decimal number right here, and we are adding it to the current position of X and adding it to the current position Y, and then changing the position as a new vector three, which just means it has three different values inside of it, X, Y, and Z. So we saw previously that this code will move the game object a tiny amount every frame. And notice it kind of slowly drifts in one direction, kind of on the diagonal, because it's changing every frame, adding a tiny, a tiny float decimal number to the current position X and position Y as it moves up the screen. And that brings us to this video. We could continue to do that, and we could do that for multiple game objects, but it's not terribly interesting. We want to allow a player or user to do something. We want them to react and to influence how they move things within the screen. To do that, we're going to need the input system. Although we won't exactly be using the input system, we will be using something in Unity called the input manager. The input manager takes a bunch of possible input through the system and it puts it into a range that we can use. And that range is negative one to one. So there's lots of possible input all filtered down into one thing. So we're working with the input system, but we're working with the input manager on top of the input system. Now I'm gonna go write some code that's going to seem a little strange because we want to gain access to input, but we don't necessarily know where to find it. So let me write some code and then we'll talk about how, we arri how I arrived and how we could arrive in the future at the same idea. I'm interested in input, and then something a little strange. I have input, get access, A-X-I-S, and then horizontal with a capital H. And now I'm going to type something different. Now I'm getting access, A-X-I-S, of vertical with a capital V. Where did I get those from? At first glance, they may seem somewhat arbitrary. Where did horizontal and vertical come from? Well, they come from the input manager. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And I'm going to show you how I got that name. So I'm going to come back over here to Unity. And then I'm going to go to the project settings. So that's under edit project settings, and then over here on the left hand side I'm selecting input manager, which puts me over here. And then we see, oh, we have something called horizontal and something called vertical, and I've already clicked on horizontal right here. Notice capital H. But there are lots of other things in here we could potentially get. Now the input manager manages the input for us. In fact, it allows a bunch of possible inputs to all be put together in one category of thing. So if we were interested in horizontal, which could mean a bunch of different things depending on what input we're talking about. We could be getting joystick input, keyboard input, controller input, more all kinds of things. So by adding a category and everything that could possibly be, this allows us to better organize, or put another way, manage the input from the input system. So this is called horizontal. The negative button in the negative direction from zero to negative one right here is left, which means the left arrow key on a keyboard. The same with the positive zero to one is right. The alternative is A and D, 
And all the way down here, we see that the X axis is mapped from a joystick and the joystick number is get motion from all joysticks. Put another way, we can use a gamepad, a joystick, A and D, or left and right arrow keys on a keyboard, all of which will be considered horizontal input. Alternatively, we can come down to vertical and do the same thing, down and up, S and W, the X axis right here, and get motion from all joysticks. So if anything happens in horizontal or anything happens in vertical, we can take either category as a type of input. And the input manager allows us to do all of this without being concerned with the exact details of what that means. So if we want to very quickly create a game, we don't need to worry about if we're getting input from a game controller versus a pad versus a joystick versus all kinds of other things. We can get into those details and I will revisit that in a future video, right now we're just interested is this horizontal or is this vertical so we'll go ahead and close the input manager so horizontal will give us a value between negative one and one and it might be zero if nothing's being pressed or held down or moved in some way and the same with vertical negative one to one and possibly could be zero so what i'm going to do then is notice how we are moving a fixed amount right here to X and a fixed amount, the same number to Y. Well, instead of us typing it twice, why don't I just create a variable to hold that number? And that can be what we use with horizontal and vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and create a float value. And I have named it speed. And I'm going to set speed to Three point one four, which is an arbitrary number. It's not important right now. It's just a number I chose. And because it is a decimal number or what's called a floating point number, we put a little F at the end to make sure we know what it is. So we have speed and we have horizontal and we have vertical. Well, because we're getting input and we're getting input every frame, we don't really need the position X and the position Y anymore nor do we really need this decimal number anymore, this floating point number. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this, and I'm going to replace it right here. And I'm going to do the same thing for vertical. And then I'm going to clean this up slightly to make this a little cleaner. Okay. So we're going to have some type of horizontal input from negative one to one. And what I want to do is I want to multiply that by speed because the actual speed we want to move is 3.14 multiplied by whatever is in the range of negative one to one. And the same thing with the vertical. Now I'm going to keep Z right here and we'll just keep on, keep on Z. We don't really pay attention to that. Now, instead of changing the position every frame, I want to translate the position. The translate operation moves from one position to a next, potentially every frame if we want to, or just moving between those locations. So now, I'm gonna write translate and then X, Y, and Z. So every frame we're going to get speed, which is a fixed number right here, a decimal number, multiply it by either something in the range of negative one to one horizontal, negative one to one vertical, keeping the Z, and then translating, moving from one point to the next, one frame to the next frame. And I'm gonna save. And move back to Unity, allow it to reset. And now we're back. So now let's play. And if I press right arrow on the keyboard, boom, I just flew away. And I press left, I fly back. And I press left and I fly off. I press right and maybe left a few times. And, and, and it seems to be going all over the place. Well, let's try it again. And I'll be very, very careful using WASD. Ah, okay. Oh, no, come back. Ah, ah, get away from me. What exactly is happening? 
Well, Unity is attempting to run at 60 frames a second, but the computer might not be running at that exact frames per second. So Unity is attempting to smooth things out for us. So every frame we're moving, there's a tiny fraction of a number, a decimal number, between one frame and the next. Unity is presenting a consistent 60 frames per second, but that's not actually what's happening in our math. Our math is moving every frame, and then there's a tiny decimal between, a difference between one frame and the next in time. So a change in time, or put it a mathematical term, a delta time. Delta is borrowed over from ancient Greek, which just means change. So the change in time, the delta time. So our issue now is that our movement is generally too fast, most of the time, and sometimes it's too slow. So we need that fraction time. So what we're going to do is come back to our code, and we're going to multiply this by time, delta time. Time, delta time. So that fraction, that interval in seconds from the last frame to the current one, we're going to multiply that, which means if there's no if there's no difference between frames, it'll just be one. But if there is a frame, it'll be a tiny decimal number, and it will always adjust currently to that exact thing. So let's go ahead and save. So instead of our kind of jerky movement around, we're going to get something a lot more consistent because we're going to let Unity help us. So anytime there's a change in its attempt to make 60 frames a second, we're going to incorporate that fractional time. And now things move very, very smoothly. Because we are matching in our code the change in time to create consistent movement. So there's tiny differences, if there are any, in Unity running at 60 frames a second on a computer that might not be, is now incorporated into our code, creating a very smooth, very slick a movement around. So let me review what I just did. I'm getting access in anything that's in the horizontal category, which might be keys on a keyboard, could be a joystick, could be other things, whatever Unity considers part of that category. I'm multiplying whatever I get in that range, negative one to one by speed, 3.14, which is a decimal number or otherwise called a floating point number in C-sharp. I'm also multiplying by the tiny potentially fractions between frames called delta time, the interval in seconds from the last frame to the current one. And this is giving us a very smooth transition because any time the amount of seconds between one frame and the next, which may not exist but could exist, we are also incorporating, meaning our movements might be very small or very large, but as long as they match whatever unity is doing, everything will match and look very smooth in movement. We are also translating, moving from one thing to the next. So our code is kind of the same idea previously, but now we're using input to move things. So let me review what I've talked about in this video. Primarily, we've been focused on working with the input manager. We can access the input manager using edit, coming down to project settings, and looking at the input manager. The input manager manages input. It works with the input system by collecting a bunch of possible things into a category and allow us to get a very consistent range, negative one to one, which we can then incorporate with, within our code. By, ask, by asking for it in Axis, we can get that range without worrying about every little thing. So anything that's in the horizontal category or in the vertical category, we get in a consistent range of negative one to one which then allows us to incorporate that into our speed and with time delta time to create a very smooth movement of sprites within Unity by combining all these different things together. So we're now working with the input system via the input manager by getting the category of input, horizontal or vertical, and then using that by multiplying by speed and time delta time to create a very smooth movement that the player can now control within Unity. Lots of concepts in this video, but now we're moving into working with multiple systems, still thinking about the connection between game objects, components, and systems as we write more complex code 
and deal with multiple systems and multiple components as part of Unity 2023. Thanks for watching.